Welcome to Small Talk with Raincraft. I'm Subha, a leadership and executive coach, and I'm Hasita, a marketing strategist. We're just two people who love to talk and love to learn. And this is us being curious about the world around us. Join us. Hey small talkers, good to have you back. Today, I'll be chatting with the co-founder and CEO of an iconic beverage brand that I know you would have tasted at some point and have enjoyed time and time again. Please welcome Neeraj Kakkar, the CEO of Hector Beverages and the makers of Paperboard Drinks, Zinga Energy Drink, and as you will find out, they have a lot of interesting stuff coming up in the pipeline. Stay tuned. Hi Neeraj, good morning. Welcome to Small Talk. So happy to have you here. Yeah, hey Shubha. Yes, very very happy to be here too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I was thinking this morning that in your uh, Coca-Cola days this kind of gloomy Bangalore weather would have been quite dreaded. But how does it pan out with your paper boat? I think it's the same. It, it is it? <laughs> it is this one has not changed. So I think Vandana my wife she complains a lot that whenever there is any romance in the air you are the worst person in that <laughs> point <laughs> and that has happened for years and uh, this uh, somehow uh, psychologically has uh, built in even in your head right that this is not a good weather so you, even if you are not in your own country or traveling somewhere or not in your own territory even then the weather there you don't enjoy it because you <laughs> like the sunny weather more now Uh, because your beverages sell more there, and that's the parallel of selling the same set of things for all of your life. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I totally get what Vandana says. I used to wake up and say, "What lovely weather!" and I'd see a grouchy face next to me. So I get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I think a lot of people would have asked you about the name Paper Boat, and we all know where that comes from: nostalgia and love that. Traditional thought process, but tell me more about Finchley Castle. What's that all about? So Finchley Castle we inherited. We were looking for a space to come to Bangalore. So we started in Gurugram. So I went to study to US and I we came back to Gurugram and with the right idea that we want to be near our parents. Parents are getting old. So we started the company in Gurugram in the first place. However, I have worked in Bangalore before and we loved the city and Bangalore kept on calling. And at some stage, uh, after spending four odd years in Gurugram, we decided to shift to Bangalore. And we were looking for an office. And uh, Finchley Castle, we inherited. Like it's a uh, building somebody constructed with a lot of passion and love. Uh, and uh, we were very fortunate. Um, we got to uh, be staying there for the last seven years. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. I've seen pictures, and it looks uh, very, very inviting and homely. Yeah, it is, and, and it's very highly creative. So I think it's in Bangalore weather. So uh, sitting inside is no uh, uh, problem. Like you can always sit outside and do whatever, and that's what a lot of people do. So essentially, at any point of time, in that office, if there are fifty people, twenty-five of them are not sitting in the rooms; so they are sitting outside. So that gives a good sense of community. People get to talk more. It's there is less hierarchy in that because of that office being there. Uh, people are on first name basis. People are open to go. to anybody and say anything it invites more celebrations uh, to happen for this thing so i think the space itself has a huge impact on culture of how the organization is shaping up and this is head office so what is happening with this to 55 people kind of will reach to next 700 800 the people uh, in different parts of their offices so i think it's kind of has a very strong impact on the culture which we uh, have in the organization No, so true. I think uh, in that sense, startups have got it right that the place you walk into every morning can really change how you feel the whole day, right? And yeah. you take pride in where you're sitting and how comfortable it is and how nice it looks and colorful it looks. Something yeah. that uh, many of us missed in our working days. It was always yeah. a very functional yeah. kind of rudimentary spaces, just kind of enough to spend yeah. eight hours. <laughs> I remember that uh, when we used to meet up in Gurga, your original ideas uh, started around something else, right? A protein drink, if I remember. How did you decide to make the switch to FMCG beverages? I mean, that's a really, really tough category in India with so many established players with developed tastes and preferences. How did that switch happen? 
so when we first came to india uh, the we were like almost very strong views on how health and wellness in india should be and that was the core goal of coming back and starting this company so we said that i used to say this uh, and it was quite a lot of naivety at that point time and that the bravery of youth is i used to say that india has in one any olympic medals and i should go and produce some beverages which people drink and then they can have india can go and do well in sports so you wanted to have a positive footprint on india uh, specifically on the health side so it came and sat and protein was the education was in north america so protein was a big thing at that point time they are taking strong place in that time so we came back and thought that protein is what india needs and we'll work on it it was a tough journey for almost a year when we start with protein it is not instant and gratification we used to go early morning to gyms and let me people taste so i was in punjabi bag and uh, one and every day you wake up at 6 and then go and then try to sample it to people so one day i went to one place like in punjabi bag and sampled the products and next week i again went to the same place then we used to shift the places and uh, i next week somehow i went there and the, the guy who tasted the previous time he said i took it last time but abhi kuch farak nahi pada and uh, which, which, is, which which was quite disheartening because you are people are looking for some instant gratification which uh, the protein drinks are not <laughs> going to get i think after a year we got really tired of waking up early like uh, and then going i think one of my very close friend uh, samir who runs this company called healthka He has built a very successful brand called Muscle Bread now, and this is primarily based around protein. Uh, he started two, three years, a uh, couple of years later than us, and it's a very strong brand. And it's almost the same thing what we were doing earlier. But we got very tired of waking up early and trying to do that. And then we said that this is not what we want to do. And then we will think about something else. And then we thought about vitamin water. We thought about energy. And I think after almost after having spent ten odd years. i am back to where i started in terms of the whole jealousness of this thing of saying that the zeal of saying that i would want to have a positive footprint on india's health we are back to the same thing a lot of innovation happening on zero sugar products we think sugar is a culprit and we will have to figure out ways on how to eliminate it from uh, and and science is also supporting us now there is lot of a um, lot of advances which has happened in the non sweetener technology and uh, that is helping us so i think there is a lot of work which is happening in that direction now and again back to the same thing because now you have established so the vulnerability of at least a startup is not there and you are more secure mm-hmm. in your this thing so you can uh again fight for what you are passionate about and try to do things which you think would have an impact on india yeah no I, and i'm sure the journey to get here where you can now kind of create a second niche because paper boat and its traditional flavors was quite unheard of right none of us had access to this or we had access to something because it was popular in our part of the country right yeah. and i think um, that's where i i really loved your story on chasing your purple carrots yeah. so maybe tell us a little bit about the purple carrots in your life objective was always to bring some of these traditional products alive right like and the uh, the thing was that some of these things were there for a long time they cumbersome to make and nobody is making it at home anymore and all of these are truly functional beverages like there is science behind every spice which has gone in some of these recipes because these spices have a positive impact on you for certain things it's not only taste it's a lot of other functional benefits of these beverages we were chasing things like purple carrots for a long time etc but i think the thing which we forgot for a very long time is so there are two broader aspect of business which you learned during this whole phase one was a product market fit and mm-hmm. second is the total addressable market what is the dam there so we were very happy with the product market fit and very narrow definition of product market fit in the early stage of our journey we will say we'd make kanji with lot of passion where you'll travel get the carrots get the right ingredients do whatever it takes the recipe has to be perfect and then you make it and if one person likes it and says oh wow this is like we used to big those comments very carefully scour those comments that saying oh yeah my dad used to make it i missed it so much now i got it Mm. uh so we used to be feeling very happy about this like giving that person that happiness is like a one goal which we have achieved and we think it'll be more like this 
However, the problem in this approach was the TAM was missing. There is the addressable market size wasn't very high, and then you were always creating very small niches, like which is very difficult to make commercially viable in a large scale. And that happened with multiple things. Like there's so many experiments we did with. Probably there's one part of the story, but there's one other story which I wanted to talk about is the story of Panakam, which I think uh, you also. Uh, It's a very very. home yeah. home flavor for me yes <laughs> yeah yeah so i think we were making it we were going to the temples and we said that we will not take home recipes we will go take temple recipes like because mm-hmm. some temples have been making it for years and it's a very strong ritual in those temples priest and the whole family um, before ram nami is just fully involved one week before in saying that we have to make panakam now and there is there is a lot of work which happens uh, during that day so we said that we will not take home recipes we will take Temple recipes, and we actually went around the four states. Is is there in four states? Like it's uh, and slightly different recipes. There is more peppery, more gingery, slightly different recipes. We are trying to make the best panakam ever made, and we worked really hard trying to get the right jaggery, right this thing, right really hard. Like it, it took just took us a lot of time getting the, and, and we are saying that we will create the best recipe out there. uh and people just love it etc there also i think it was just a the, the two mistakes there one we were trying to please four states which is a very tough task nobody can do and i think you should i think <laughs> like try to try to focus on one and then try to win that better so we were trying to create a recipe where there are four uh, points at different and we say the center point is the point of least resistance and that's actually not the case <laughs> so you you can't create the best recipe that way but the second was that the uh, Ham was not there at all. Like the window was so small, it will be consumed only for that couple of days. And some people bought it in the first phase, simply thinking of sell. Yeah, I'm not doing it, and I'm getting a hygienic phase because uh, one of one of the other thing was that whatever you're getting outside was extremely unhygienic. But the ham was not there at all. So the kind of effort which we put to build this was to the results which you're getting in the end. Like you'll you'll create a. X lakh business uh, mm-hmm. per annum, which is not worth thing, and the whole organization is just deeply in, entrenched in making the best uh, product possible. I think that's where the organization has evolved. So I think uh, thought process has also evolved that you you still be very, we are still very finicky about the product map. We still like for every single thing, every ingredient to the last detail, like where is this tea coming from, where is this uh, spice coming from. you go you check which is the best spice to have which is which area pepper is best in vinland or pub pepper is best somewhere else so you just are very detail oriented about each and everything and we, we still do it and that is in the dna of the culture but now i think you don't attempt this very niche very things. like you try yeah you try to attempt the large thing that if it hits so the then the business would be large versus if it hits and then also then what if you become the highest seller panakam seller of the world like globally the highest panakam seller then also you are not creating a lot of business at that point of time so i think that's i think these are the things that change in the way you are thinking up yeah no you're right i mean these are one they are very very special drinks to in each of the states maybe yeah. even just the local jaggery changes the flavor and you're yeah, used to yeah, a certain yeah. flavor and yeah. it's associated with ram navmi or it's associated with a festival and then rest of the year you're not even yeah. thinking about it yeah. right it's a yeah. tough yeah. tough market to play yeah yeah so how have you now what's your basket like what are the most popular flavors that are pretty much pan india or it's still you see a lot of regional spikes uh, so we see a lot of regional differences i think there are different fruits in uh, uh, different things so i think the way we somewhat organization has evolved is in the early phase we were very focused on some of these recipes and some of those recipes which have gained scale are still there like ampana jaljeera they continue to be high seller for us and they are there but right now there is more focus on fruits and what do you do with that like you take guava and uh, can you make something out of it and then this chili guava and all that so i think you there is more focus on indian fruits and indian farmers and see how do we and that difference we see uh, dramatically in uh, different states so in gujarat guava sells the highest and in punjab lychee sells the highest you know one of the things which traditional companies thought that mango is large in india and mango is large in india but i think we found success in playing around with some other fruits and try to uh, reach other customers there so i think um, and different states behave very differently we see that that part very clearly uh, 
uh, in in our analysis that uh, regional differences in india food, they, i think is very difficult to sell. the only product which you sell than india is amaras uh i think which kind of uh, is a signature product for us which has done well from the beginning uh and that uh, we have worked very hard on making sure that we procure the right produce every single year we naturally ripen it do all of that stuff in making sure that integrity that product is there. but that product is the one which sells all all day. yeah i think mango is the most popular fruit and most look forward to season here and so yeah. you can get yeah. all year round then nothing like it yeah yeah yes no nostalgia itself is a is a very tough space to play in right because uh, your customer also is growing or you have a new set of customers coming in for whom nostalgia is very different so yeah. i know that even today like a lot of paper boat ads and social media to us it's very very nostalgic the train journeys and the stuff we did in school and those images immediately go viral but how do you keep that up because if you look at the next generation the train journey is not so much part of their childhood yeah and it, it may not strike a chord so how do you keep up that story of nostalgia first i think is the creative expression of paperboard is nostalgia but i think the brand is not built around nostalgia the brand is when we first started we said it is we wanted to do traditional drinks but we wanted to do in a modern way we didn't want to go the ayurveda out or say let's say the chavan prash out like for so we didn't want to go in that direction so we wanted to have this traditional drinks which are very, which are very modern which we wanted to bring alive for the next generation i think we want them to appreciate what these social beverages are yeah. i think those uh, like chavan prash and others also have that medicinal healing kind of aspect to it right yeah, yeah correct then but we didn't talk about it. for example mm-hmm. ampana just you know talk about the, the functional part of it we didn't mm-hmm. want to talk about it. we wanted to talk about the it's a, it's a good drink to have and uh, mm-hmm. and the drink the recipe is all very traditional but the packaging the form and the composition we wanted that to be modern so when we were writing it in the first place we said what is traditional natural we said that's innocence and we said what is modern forward looking cool outside that is we said is hope so we said the brand is a combination of innocence and hope so these two words came in our life much before the word paperboard so then at some stage we kept on experimenting with this thought for a while and shripanath kani who was our who worked with us in cook so he was helping us in that time so he drew two concentric circle of innocence and hope and we said what lies at the center of this like what lies at the center of innocence and hope and that point of time and uh, the word paper boat emerged so because it is uh, if you draw two circles and you say what is at the common point of these two so it, paper boat is a very innocent act is a very hopeful mm-hmm. act and then came childhood memories uh, which are there is lot of what you do at that point on there's a lot of innocence and a lot of hope so cynicism is not part of your life at that age right like so and then cynicism starts creeping in and start becoming bigger part of the life as you grow so that's what we took out of that and that's how the brand paperboard came alive so this paperboard which came alive then the childhood memories and drinks and memories and all that so that's the broader this thing but but So I think that surprisingly the memories are quite similar. Like it's the the things are changing. Like we don't have we we never had video games while we were growing up, and these yeah. kids have. But some of the expression of the memories, like some of the things, fears, expectations, hope, friends, relationships, that doesn't change as much. Like we think that the generation is changing, and our parents were different than us. But I think ultimately, bro- broadly, I think that part remains same. There are, and. in some cases cases like the scc classes have changed dramatically so you find a change more but then there are same amount of people who are living in the same towns where they're growing up they're still taking train journeys they are still making paper boats they are still when they go out the water is uh, knee deep and they are very happy when the din day holiday happens in school and those things happen and it happens here also the one day like um, and she who's you know sound like he was 8 years old or 9 years old and came and said that i was eating watermelon and i uh, got a seed inside me what would happen the tree would get inside me or like so <laughs> so that sound i would have had when i was growing up and right? <laughs> so i think so the thought that so i think some of that stuff so the the place of where you create those memories or those experiences is my best friend the mm-hmm. friendship grow how do i deal with it how do i deal with the parents how do i deal with the sibling 
the my relationship with my grandfather and the love which i get from there so i think those things do not change is uh, what we think that those that that part of the thing we think it changes too much from generation to generation actually not and we find that to be resonating with the younger crowd as well maybe some of the things which so there are two kind of memories that one is the memory of what happened to you after that instant happened i think that memory is there and you felt joy and you felt happiness and all so that doesn't change maybe the gift has changed like you know somebody gifted you uh, in our time maybe a bat or now it is a PSP3 or something something of that sort i think mean, i think that has changed but i think the what the feeling after getting that gift what you got the favorite toy which you have i think that has remained same no no it's so true i think the emotions are all the same the relationships are similar the occasions are similar Uh, I also think as a sandwich kind of generation we are also keeping it alive in many ways right because yeah. we our parents if are around or family senior family members are around then you make sure you expose the kids to a little bit of what you yeah. experienced yeah. so I think it does get passed on it does get kept alive generation yeah. after generation some of the the smaller bits will change like you said it's yeah. Uh, yeah. instead of a bat it's a ps4 or something but uh, mm, it's still yeah. the act of giving and the act you know the celebration yeah. of festivals yeah. together etc yeah so how has um, covid been and how is especially for your teams did everybody go back home and how did you manage to keep the kind of ethos and culture and 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 kind of just get things go, uh, done during this yeah. tough period covid was a very tough period for us essentially and it's tough period for the country and uh, a lot of people suffered on multiple fronts and suffering is at times far higher than what we can imagine but uh, we are uh, we also had a tough period because of bad for the business it happened during two summers which are generally the high season for us and we were primarily a immediate consumption company so most of our products are when people go out and consume rather than take they bring it home so that was a very large portion of our business and at that point time and covid started like 85 90% of business was like that uh and uh, so that suffered people were not going out not traveling no air no aircraft nothing and i think over a period of time i think people were not having cold beverages as much as they were having other so they probably having more snacks and other stuff but not having as much cold beverages so i think but it was negative from multiple perspective and it's bad for the team also because a if you are a say a e-commerce company and working there i think you're happy right like in, in that sense like some sense that the business is at least thriving and going at yeah, a fast yeah, pace so some moving, businesses yeah. benefit this benefited because of covid happened and we were uh, extremely negatively affected business uh, during covid phase so is our industry overall i think there was a negative impact we were the worst impacted because we, our take home packs were a very limited and we are primarily a immediate consumption pack so i think that has a but the impact of it and uh, hindsight by like 2 years 2 to 2 and a half years later like it's it's a tough journey like those 2 years were tough it is brings a feeling of vulnerability in you and all of that but i think hindsight wise i think it's just brought the team together like there was something of trying to come out of adverse situation the kind of thing which we haven't faced now like before and there is so much uncertainty in how would it come out at so some people left in the very early stage and they probably it was a smart move to do to uh, not go through all of this in a tough environment um, but then there are people who stuck around they stuck around and they have come out of it in a feeling like a very strong team at this point of time and i think that and then we innovated and we made our product lines better we made our product lines which are for future the innovation happened during that time at a faster pace than any other point of time in our history the company with the pharma diversity in the kind of products which we have right now what we are trying to do the thought process is very clear we again very strongly believe in health and wellness and that thing feeling is Uh, strongly reinforced during covid time and we are again going back to the early days where we were like almost militant like saying that we have to create this uh, healthy products for india and we are again back to the same thing and we think very you know there better uh, way of thinking of product market and time like what should we, what should we do and we have the scale so it's a very tough and and because you have i have done it so much and i feel uh, very passionately so i think if i have to go through experience like this again and the results is what it is i would do it because the results are so good for the company 
but i don't think so it's very humanly possible to go through some experiences like this again and again uh, in your life so i think it's uh, in hindsight you are happy that you have come out of it stronger like a winner and very good and which we wouldn't have done uh, if this wouldn't have happened but the pain it during that journey was uh, for the organization for everybody i think it was, i wish nobody has to go through it again no i think well said i think resilience is i think for entrepreneurs especially uh, i mean we all have our ups and downs in the corporate world also but i think the the scale and intensity that you have to bring that skill to the front is very very different in entrepreneurship yeah. i mean has you've generously shared there are so many times when things aren't working and yeah. and you have to plug away and probably this kind of downturn in beverages has like you said really spurred your food and snacks and yeah. thinking yeah. along those lines and creating yeah. a more sustainable yeah. product range correct and i think as soon as the covid ended i think we are firing on multiple cylinders now a the consumption of vegan which went missing that has come back b we have created far more we have created home consumption uh, products mm-hmm. we have created products which are not sold in uh, summers only we have created products which are far more health and wellness and which have a very long thing for future so i think we come back extremely strongly and this year is by far we wouldn't have imagined a year like this pre covid like we mm-hmm. pre covid in 2019 we wouldn't have thought that we could have a year like what we are having right now uh and we in the normal courses if covid wouldn't mm-hmm. happen 2022 wouldn't be as good for us as it is now but covid happened and we went through that thing and now this is far better than what we could have done in the normal course um uh, because multiple things which you did during that time every cylinder is firing at this point in time and firing very well right now so that's wonderful to hear another uh, thing that i wanted to touch upon with you which is uh, we hear so many stories those of us who are not in that world about startups and funding and the pressure of investors uh, how real is that i mean i i know you've had very high profile investors like uh, mr narain murthy from very early on so how much of that impacts your ability as an entrepreneur to do what you want to execute what you want just tell me a little bit about that yeah no i think uh, so you no know, we have been very very fortunate on the investor front i mean we have some of the best in the business we have uh, nrn coming in very early sequoia a91 sofina i think all of them are the best in their uh, particular field and we have somehow extremely fortunate to always attract the best in, like they are the top notch and we got the top notch in our capital i think i've been very very fortunate only feeling which i have towards investors is gratitude like the gratitude of the highest kind and that has got so and we enforced during covid time is unimaginable they they have been uh, going on the limb supporting us so so in the early phase also it's not that we are always positive there was times when we went through some bad quarters but they have always been supporting but covid was a longish period which tested everybody everybody's patience and they were uh, they were extremely helpful super helpful never once saying anything which might have a chance of discouraging a team or anything always positive always supporting with uh, advice with money with whichever way you think is right and uh, i i feel some of it is overblown of two three instances which have happened here and there and the, you know the story because in some sense that kind of broader human emotion of like you know trying to see that drama and what's happening on the other yeah. side and as it gets you better and uh, yeah better but i think if you poll um, the uh, entrepreneurs i think 99% of them would have gratitude and nothing else for them mr i think it's just uh, i used to say this to my team like there is a reason why angels are called angels they are the reason why we are here and there are reasons like some of these investors are successful over a period of time because they keep supporting their uh, the teams uh, very regularly so no i think is uh, i am absolutely on like on the side where we th- i think that for entrepreneurs there is no better time than this when there this there is money around and there is very good set of investors who are supporting you to chase your dreams i think this is a perspective we don't hear very often so it, it's really good to to know and i mean i guess intuitively we know i mean for somebody who is invested their time and money and energy they also have every reason to want you to succeed and uh, there are i think a lot of investors who do motivate support guide and are and actually they are the ones who are there in the downturn and we yeah. don't hear about it yeah uh, yeah we yeah. only hear yeah. the drama like you say because that's more interesting uh, news to yeah. read yeah 
and that that's also very rare instances i think uh, there are very few instances where this has happened and it has blown out of proportion uh, but i think uh, 99% of investors and 99% of, uh, of entrepreneurs i think the relationship is very strong very good very this thing they're building it together uh, whatever is being built uh, and people have the same level of ownership in everything what you do they very passionate about this uh, but i think there is obviously one not percent case here and there which happens and that gets i think that talk, that gets more news you know so yeah. yeah you were mentioning that your your son shree is also going looking to go the entrepreneurship route what are some of the things that you would probably advise him once he's ready to start what, what for and for younger entrepreneurs out there what are two three things that you would like them to really think about in the beginning of the journey yeah i think the part which i'll tell him and i think he feels more strongly about it than i i do uh, and i think it's the right way and that's the thing which i tell him that you do something which makes society around you better i think uh, so i think that part if you can you make money on the way and build your legacy and do things which you do. but i think if you are doing if you are putting all your energy because you are putting all your energy like you are on it yeah. 24/7 uh, and if you are doing something which makes Um, where you can see some tangible benefit to people around you in the society, it gives you a very different level of happiness during uh, your tough time. That's the automatic stabilizer. If something to say that you know you're going through, and you say at least the farmers in certain districts are benefiting, at least the consumer in certain places are happy, and so that gives that added. I think that's something which I will definitely do. Just choose that thing which benefits the society around you. Uh, obviously, there are. the things being done which uh, are like not as beneficial i would say just try to see which area you want to enter like you know uh, the money can be made in other areas also but probably this is the thing which you should try to do is that's one uh, advice i would tell him and otherwise I'll let him figure it out on his own <laughs> no, right and it's a generation that truly um, i think it resonates with them more than us like you said they choose causes that they believe in and they give it their yeah. wholehearted support and yeah. energy so yeah. yeah i'm sure i'm sure he'll he'll find his way uh, yeah. and and that's that's i think that's what the journey of entrepreneurship is also about it's not supposed to be smooth and easy and perfect yeah. right yeah yeah yes it is yes i then, think it has yeah, yeah. Th- that's then otherwise we'd go for a government job or <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, neeraj you decided to go f- to wharton after some years of uh, working what was the key kind of decision points there what were the pros and cons that you were thinking about there because quite a few people reach out to me saying hey i'm i've done about 10 years of work and i feel like i'm stagnating or i feel like i need to do something so should i go up and do an mba in the us was that really a turning point for your career or do you think that this would have come about even otherwise no it it was a turning point i think it the reason why i did was uh, so i was i was working in in a in a large company i was very successful there very good company i enjoyed it every single day you wanted to go to work the culture was very good you're succeeding and uh, you're succeeding very well like at some point said i think that i the younger general manager trying to become better faster grow faster than uh, other people and being very happy I think at some stage my boss told me that you will have to just slow down your expectation path and just take your time like every year you yeah. can't keep coming and asking for a grade and that's not <laughs> going to happen and then he told me that you should pick up a sport maybe start playing golf and uh, you know that will put your energy to better you that one time and then rather than picking up a golf stick I might as well pick up pick up a GMAT book and write a, a, a GMAT exam and that's it so I think that's what I did and I think what it did to me so I I was amongst the top performing students in the class. I was uh, winning all the scholarly medals and everything. And you know, and there are people who are from the rest of the world, some of the best people around. And you're doing it in uh, with them. I think you that increases your confidence quite a bit. Thought I will go back to previous company, but then I did an internship with a couple of companies, got offers there, and so everything kind of was happening, right? Like everything. Mm-hmm. Then that gives you so much confidence that you can do anything. and that confidence is what has carried me for so many years like there is never a feeling that you will fail there is always a feeling that you can do anything and you will always succeed and you will find the answer so i think that important was extremely important in that that way i think to get gain, gaining that confidence uh, at that stage so 
Yeah, because yeah, at that stage, it's not an easy investment to make of time and money because the opportunity cost is is high. Yeah. I think it gives that uh, kind of jumping board to do bigger and better things. So yeah, yeah. What I'm hearing is that it's if if you're otherwise ready for it, it definitely opens your mind, expands your network, yeah. and gives you the chance to maybe try stuff you wouldn't have otherwise tried. Absolutely. A, you wouldn't be aware of those opportunities. B, you wouldn't have the courage to do it. I think the courage was a equally important part. That uh, I think that was an uh, so you're doing well and you're the same person probably, but I think the courage kind of adds to it. So, so who's your support network? Whom do you go to for counsel? Because I'm sure you are mentoring and grooming a lot of people. But whom do you go to? No, I think I talk to a lot of friends who are in entrepreneurship uh, circle. I think they're like, uh, uh, you know, I think they're friends in Bangalore. I think that, and that's very strong set of uh, people. Like you generally want to hang out with, you want to go and take their advice, just discuss with them. Hari Menon, Amleek, uh, Chai Point, Urban Letter, Ashko, Epigamia, uh, like all these guys are. We have. Started in a similar fashion, do some kind of similar stuff. So I think you just go talk to each other if you're facing some problem, and then try to solve for it. Uh, I think that's I think is the um, best support network which I would say. I think that's like where you feel uh, because everybody is going through somewhat similar. So I think the advice is always more genuine than what you should do. That I think is really value that those moments which I spend with these friends. It's it's really been lovely hearing from you, Neeraj. I I just love the. Candidness with which uh, you have shared yeah. your journey—it's what people need to hear and love to hear. What what we read and what we see in the media—it's maybe I don't know ten twenty percent there, but uh, there's a yeah. there's a large yeah. part of the story that we don't get to know. So thank yeah. you for sharing your paperboard journey so generously. I've been yeah. a fan from day one, you know that. And then when I first yeah. saw chicky, I was—I mean that's one of my favorite snacks. So I said, "Hey, wow." <laughs> Yeah, and easy you. to consume little packets right yeah thank you yeah so look forward to a lot of new ideas and new products that will take us back to our childhood and thanks thanks for very nice catching up and nice talking to you thank you so much neeraj bye yeah bye hey small talkers thank you for listening till the very end We love bringing these episodes to you and we hope you enjoy them too. Please do drop in your comments, likes, shares, reviews, whatever you can do on the platform that you're on to help us reach a larger and larger audience and that would really make our day. You can find out more about today's guest or today's episode in the show notes. All the details and how you can find us on social media is right there. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.